Greatest watch of all time is a term that I like to throw around rather liberally. But today we're checking out a watch that I think is a genuine contender for that title. If you tried to make this watch 60 years ago, no matter how much money you had, it would probably be completely impossible. And yet today you can find this watch in Walmart for under $20. Today we're checking out the Casio AE1200WH, also known as the Royale. Take a look at it and let me see if I can make my case. Hey guys, welcome back to Just a Watch. My name is Dave and I live in Japan and this is a channel all about budget watch collecting. And when it comes to budget watches, in a lot of ways, Casio is one of the best brands you can possibly take a look at. I know a lot of us get into the hobby because of mechanical watches and the allure of that beating heart ticking away on your wrist. And when I started getting into collecting watches, I really kind of overlooked a lot of these Casio watches. They were the kinds of things I wore when I was a kid. I thought of them as these cheap digital watches that were kind of tacky. And so I started buying mechanical watches left and right. But about a year ago, I figured I'd give these Casio watches another chance. And honestly, with all of the watches that I have purchased and reviewed, the ones that I find myself actually wearing more than anything else are these really cheap plastic Casio watches. They're kind of like the jeans and sweatshirts of the watch family. You know, if you're just kicking around your house and you don't have anybody to impress and you want something comfortable and functional, there's really nothing better. Now, if you're a fan of Casio and you'd like to get this cool Casio F91W t-shirt, I am selling that on my website. You can check it out at justthewatch.com. Help support the channel, I really appreciate it. And today we're checking out the Casio Royale, which offers possibly the best bang for your buck of any watch that I've ever seen. And that's something that really fascinates me about this whole horology and watch collecting thing. Watches, especially watches with complications, used to be only for rich people. And yet, thanks to the advance of technology and companies like Casio, you can get an incredibly rugged watch that is just jam-packed with features for next to nothing. This is a watch that has a 10-year battery life. It has an excellent LED backlight. It, can, it has five alarms. It has world time. You've got a countdown timer, a stopwatch, and effectively a perpetual calendar. It's built by Casio, so you know that it's going to be rugged and reliable. And yeah, you can readily pick this watch up for under $20 if you live in the United States. Ironically, here in Japan, it sells for closer to 30 but Either way, it's still a phenomenal value. Because of the price and feature set of this watch, I think you can make a case for this being one of the greatest watches ever built, if not the greatest. So in addition to reviewing this, I wanna make a couple of comparisons to four watches in particular that I think make yeah, an interesting case for this. But first, let's do a quick review and talk about what this watch gives you. As far as dimensions and specifications go, this watch is 40 millimeters across. It's kind of a square shape. It has roughly 45 millimeters lug to lug uh, with 18 millimeter lugs. However, the strap actually uh, flares out to 24 millimeters and then immediately tapers down from there. It's 12.5 millimeters thick. It has what I can only describe as a plastic crystal, 100 meters of water resistance, and weighing at an incredibly light 39 grams with the strap included. And this watch is absolutely jam-packed with features and information, and it has a kind of interesting ways of displaying it. You know, if you look at the watch as a whole, it does have this kind of retro, funky look to it. Now, that sort of retro style of this watch has become a major selling point for it, especially in the watch community. People like to really take this watch and personalize it. One of the easiest things that you can do is throw it on a different strap. It's pretty easy to put this on an 18 millimeter NATO strap. Or if you want something a little bit more elegant, Vario actually produced a watch strap specifically for this, a really high quality leather strap. Uh, that fits the lugs to kind of give you that same tapered look that the resin strap has. They sent me one of those over for free, and I particularly like the black version on the black watch. Looking at the watch face, you actually have four segments in it. In the upper left, you have a digital representation of an analog clock. In the top right, you have a small window that shows whether your alarms or your hourly chime are on or off. And then below that, you have a world map that actually when you switch over to the world time mode, you can cycle through a whole bunch of different cities, and you can see on that map where you are actually kind of helpful for figuring out where you are uh, in the time zones. And then in the bottom, you have your main readout that has time, date, and kind of an idea of which 
function you're in. And this watch has a lot of function. On your home screen, you have your local time, day, and date. And on that home screen, you can also select four other time zones to be displayed, which you can cycle through by hitting the search button in the lower right corner. Using the mode button to cycle over to your next screen, you get the world time, and that will allow you to cycle through all of the cities that are on here. And the region that that city is in will be highlighted on the world map as you cycle through. Bumping over to the next screen, you have your alarms. You can set up to five alarms on this. And then this is also where you can turn the hourly chime on and off. Going over to the next screen, you have a countdown timer that you can set to anything you want. Cycling over again, you have a stopwatch. And all of these are incredibly useful features. I mean, these are like the main things that we use watches for. This is almost as feature packed as you can possibly get without going over to like an actual smartwatch. And you combine those features with the backlight that this watch has and the 100 meters of water resistance. And when you add all of that up from a functional perspective, this is just about the most perfect watch you could ask for. But it gets even better than that. Because this watch features the resin case and that resin bracelet, it's actually incredibly light on the wrist and extremely comfortable. Now this watch does have some cons, which I'll get to in a few minutes, but I wanna take just a moment to compare it to four other watches that I think really highlight why this watch is special and why it is so amazing. If this watch is going to take the title of greatest of all time, it's gonna to have to get through some stiff competition. Starting with a Patek Philippe reference 5204R. This is one of Patek Philippe's grand complication watches. This watch features a mechanical movement that has a split second chronograph, a perpetual calendar, and a moon phase. It is an incredibly complicated piece of machinery inside of this thing. Not only is it an incredible feat of engineering, it's a true work of art. And if you wanna buy this watch, the retail price is over $300,000. Now part of that price is due to the fact that it's made out of gold, but a large part of that cost is for that mechanical movement in there. Before quartz watches were invented, this was like the only way to get these kinds of complications on your wrist. And don't get me wrong, uh, to create a watch that has a perpetual calendar, a moon phase, and a split second chronograph that is mechanical, that's, that's wound by little springs and gears, that doesn't require a battery or have a computer inside of it, it's an amazing feat of engineering and miniaturization. So how could this little $16 Casio possibly be better than this Patek Philippe watch? Well, actually, objectively, it is better in many very significant ways. The Casio Royale is more functional. It has more complications in this Patek Philippe. It's more durable. This Casio Royale will survive better in the water. The Patek Philippe only has 30 meters of water resistance. And because of the resin case and quartz movement, it's gonna be much more shock resistant. It's more accurate, it's more comfortable, it's more legible, and it's 15,000 times cheaper. Before the quartz revolution, it would have been completely unthinkable to get a watch like this Casio Royale for this price. And yet now this watch is readily available to absolutely anybody and people are still buying $300,000 Patek Philippe's. Anyways, on to the next one. And with that, we're gonna flip and go the complete opposite direction and talk about the Casio F91W, which is often cited as the greatest watch of all time. And this watch also is an iconic watch. It's also made by Casio. You know, Casio has been making a watch in this form factor for many years. And really the form factor of the F91W uh, did a lot to popularize and really bring the watch to the masses. It's kind of the older, smaller brother of the Casio Royale. And from the standpoint of watch heritage, maybe the F91W edges out the Royale a little bit. But I don't like the F91W. It's too small for my wrist. The backlight is absolutely terrible. And it only has 30 meters of water resistance. For just a couple dollars more than the F91W, I can get a watch that fits my wrist better, that has a better backlight, better water resistance and more features, including the world time and multiple time zones, which is one of the most important features to me. So I think the Casio Royale does everything that the F91 did and does, and does it just a little bit better and manages to keep the cost pretty close to the same. Now, one of the biggest features of this watch, I think, is the amount of functions and complications that it packs into it. And yet there are watches that have more complications than that. And that's smart watches. So arguably you could say that the Apple Watch is sort of taking everything that this Casio did and extending it. Basically with the Apple Watch, you have an infinite number of complications. You can just add more apps and make it do more and more things. And yet despite that, in a few key areas, I think you can make a strong case for the Casio Royale being the better watch. Durability is one. The Apple Watch features a massive screen on the front of it that's liable to get 
cracked or crushed. And while it's nice that it's gotten up to 50 meters of water resistance, the Casio Real still offers 100 meters of water resistance. Price factors into this as well. If you break the Apple Watch, you're out at least $400. Whereas if you can break the Casio, you're out less than 20. Battery life is another huge advantage. I used to wear a smartwatch for a while, but having to recharge the battery every day, it's kind of annoying. It's like my phone. If I forget to charge it one night, the next day I'm running around or I'm gonna be without it for a while while I wait for it to charge, it's a pretty major inconvenience at this point, especially compared to a watch that has a 10 year battery life. Finally, let's compare this watch to the Skamei Royale. This is a Chinese produced homage of the Casio Royale. You can pick the Scamé up on AliExpress for about $10, so it's like $6 cheaper. And a lot of times when you look at homages of more popular watches, they offer a lot more for the money than the original does. And so that's why I wanted to kind of take this final comparison and, and take a look at that and see if you go for an homage, you know, can you really get the same features for less money? Um, no, it, it, it is less money, but it doesn't have the same features. The Skamei only has one alarm as opposed to the Royale's five. The Skamei has dual time. It does not have the world time. It doesn't have the little map. The Royale also bests it in water resistance. And Casio has a much longer uh, brand heritage and a better reputation for durability and longevity. Skamei is a pretty new brand. And the cost difference really isn't that great. I don't think saving $6 to get the Chinese produced Skamei is at all a better option than getting the original Casio Royale. And so yeah, in a lot of ways, I think the Casio Royale is better than those other watches that I just compared it against. When it comes to giving you the most watch for the least amount of money, I think there's a really strong case to be made for this being the greatest watch of all time. But it's not a perfect watch. There were a couple things that did kind of annoy me on this. And while I really like this watch, I still find myself going back to the Casio W215H. That's my favorite cheap Casio watch. It actually costs about the same of this. It doesn't have the world time functions, but it's a simpler, more user-friendly watch. And that user-friendliness, that's kind of what's kept me back from really embracing the Royale. There's so many different screens and so many different time zones, I often find myself getting lost on this watch. I'll lose track of whether I'm in my home screen on a second time zone or whether I'm in the world time screen scrolling through all the time zones and I find myself sometimes pushing a lot of buttons to get to the information that I want. Going along with that, I've had kind of a difficult time figuring out the daylight savings time function on this watch. I live in Japan, which doesn't do daylight savings time, so I don't want to turn daylight savings time on my home time, but I need daylight savings to roll over on the time zones that do have daylight savings. And so far, I've only found out how to do that manually, and that would take forever. I know that there's gotta be some way to automatically flip everything over to daylight savings time and then turn Japan back, but I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Again, kind of leaning into the lack of user friendliness that this watch might have. That said, I still think this is an absolutely phenomenal watch. It's one that I do wear quite often because it does have that world time. And it's just such an easy grab and go watch that I can put on and not have to worry about at all. So if you haven't picked up one of Casio's really cheap plastic watches, I do think it's something that everybody should have on their, in their collection. But all right guys, that's gonna wrap it up for today. Let me know what you think of the Casio Royale down below or what your favorite cheap Casio digital watch under like $50 is. If you think there's another one I should review on the channel, let me know. I'll see if I can pick it up and check it out. That will wrap it up for today. Again, don't forget to check out the t-shirt store. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye.